I want to start by asking us just a couple of questions about how we are doing today. As you look at your day ahead, or maybe if we're at the end of the day, as you look at tomorrow, what are you excited about? What is good and fantastic that is coming up? Alongside that, what are you worried about? What are you stressing about? What is consuming your thinking and your emotions? Because for all of us, there are times and there are days in our lives when things are good and there are good things that are happening. But there are times too when things are difficult, when things are stressful, when things are full on and it's difficult to find time and space to breathe. I came across this quote. We lived in a frenzied, chaotic world under a constant siege of busyness and noise. The weapons of mass distraction are everywhere. We are bombarded by millions of advertisements daily. The Christian community is not exempt. We were designed to experience fullness of joy, yet many only experience fullness of schedule. Where can we go to find rest and peace? Where can we go to find rest and peace? If we're honest, most of us know the answer to that. The answer is God. The answer is the glorious invitation that we have to come and to bring our lives to him in prayer. And yet sometimes that isn't always our first response when we feel like that. The quote goes on to say this. Be still and know that I am God. We find peace in God's presence. We get to know God better through prayer. Prayer is relationship and two-way communication with God. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But how can we experience abundance if we don't learn to slow down? We need to stop and quiet ourselves and to spend time in real relationship with God. Prayer is one of the most exciting and life-changing invitations that we have from God to come as we are into his presence, to share our hearts, to share our joys, to share our difficulties, to pray for our family, our friends, our world, the situations that we and others face. What an immense privilege we have and we know it and yet so often we don't live in the light of it and I think there are a few reasons why We don't always pray as much and spend as much time with God as perhaps we could. I think the first is just our schedules. I think it is so easy for our schedules just to get filled with so many other things. And there are times when we just don't prioritise and make it one of the most important points in our day. To be in God's presence, to connect with him. The second thing is that I think at times we don't feel good enough. How can God answer my prayers? Who am I to be asking him to do these things? The third thing I think is that sometimes we feel as though when we pray there's nobody listening. Our prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling. Where are you God? Fourthly I think that sometimes when we pray we haven't seen the answers to prayer that we've wanted. And that has left us discouraged and disappointed. And I think fifthly, sometimes we just think, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to do. And I think in this whole area of prayer, we understand the power of it, but we don't always know how to do it. And we're not alone. As we look through scripture, as we look at Jesus's followers, they were there with him 24 seven, and they could see for themselves up close and personal the importance of prayer, how Jesus made time for his father, how it was key to his life. And they were desperate. They wanted to know how to do it. And we find this exchange with them and Jesus. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Teach us to pray that was their prayer that was their request of Jesus and in the next few weeks we are going to be spending time inviting Jesus to teach us to pray 
because Jesus's response to their request to teach them to pray was to share what we know as the Lord's Prayer. And in sharing it, there are two ways that we can use the Lord's Prayer. Firstly, we can use it as a prayer in its own right. It can be something that we just speak out and share and use as a written prayer. And that's great and that is powerful. But just as powerful is to take it line by line and to use it as a framework to pray into, getting a sense of what is on God's heart for us to be praying for. And as we go through it line by line, there are going to be different folks in the life of our church who are going to be sharing, who are going to be sharing what that line means and giving us inspiration and leading us in prayer as we pray into those things. And I'm excited. I'm excited at what they're going to share. And I'm more excited at what God is going to do in each one of us. My prayer is that our prayer is teach us to pray. My prayer is that God would speak and move powerfully in our lives. And I want to invite you right now just to be still, just to spend some time in God's presence, to not think that you're not good enough, but to know that God welcomes you, to know that God delights in you, to know that God loves you and wants you to come and share, wants you to come and be with him, that he may begin to teach you to pray, that he may transform your life, that he may transform your thinking, that he may be at work in you and at work through your prayers in this world.